Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the application of the trick known as completing the square for multivariate Gaussian PDFs. Given the linear model t equal to phi times w plus some noise, say v, that is, we have a measurement or a target value t and we have hidden variable w and we have noise v. So, we are given the prior of w as a normal distribution with mean equal to m0 and variance equal to s0. And then we are also have the likelihood function that is t given w follows a normal distribution with mean equal to phi w and variance equal to sigma where sigma is the covariance of this noise vector v. So, given this information we want to find the posterior. That is probability distribution of w or probability density function of w given t and the evidence that is probability of t or probability density function of t. So, by base rule, we know that the posterior p of w given t is equal to the prior multiplied by the likelihood divided by p of t and we also know that p of t is equal to integral p of w p of t w p dw because this is nothing but the joint distribution and when you integrate w out you bet you get the marginal density of t from the joint density by integrating w out we can get the marginal density of t so from the base rule, we know that the structure of W given T is proportional to that of the prior multiplied by the likelihood. And clearly, the evidence is a function that is independent of W. And since P of W is normal, that is a Gaussian distribution, and also P of T given W is also normal, that means they basically form a conjugate pair and the posterior w given t should also be a Gaussian that is it should also follow normal normal distribution that means assume that the the posterior distribution follows the, the normal distribution with the exponent equal to w minus m n into s n inverse w minus m n and the product p of w multiplied by p of t given w that is the prior with the likelihood is proportional to exponential of minus w minus m naught into s naught inverse w minus m naught and we have the likelihood function which is t minus phi times w transpose sigma inverse t minus phi times w. So, this is the product of prior with the likelihood function. Now, by comparing these two exponents, we can clearly see that w transpose, excuse me, there is it. So, w transpose s n inverse w should be equivalent to w transpose, there is another transpose here. So, w transpose s naught inverse w plus w transpose phi transpose sigma inverse and then we have phi into w. So, by taking W transpose is common. So we have S naught inverse plus phi transpose sigma inverse phi into W. That means the covariance S inverse, S n inverse, that is of the posterior density, S n inverse is equal to S naught inverse plus phi transpose sigma inverse phi. Now, by comparing the linear terms, that is w transpose s n inverse into m n we have minus s n inverse m n is equal to the linear terms here that is s naught inverse into m naught minus s naught inverse m naught minus the final linear term that is w transpose into phi transpose sigma inverse t that is we have minus phi transpose sigma inverse t. Therefore, the mean of the posterior is equal to 
SN, that is by taking, by taking SN onto the right side, we have SN times S0 inverse M0 plus phi transpose sigma inverse T. So this is equation 2. So by using 1 and 2, we can write that the posterior W given T is a normal distribution with mean equal to MN and variance equal to covariance equal to the least covariance matrix is equal to Sn which is defined by this equation. Thus we have the posterior density of W given the measurements T as a normal distribution with mean Mn and mean vector equal to Mn and the covariance matrix equal to Sn. Now let us look at the derivation of P of T which is equal to integral P of W, P of T given W, dW. And the integrand is given by a constant multiplied by this exponential. So this is equal to integral 1 by pi power m by 2 where m is the dimension of the vector w multiplied by s0 determinant of s0 power 1 by 2 into exponential of minus w minus m0 transpose s0 inverse w minus m0 multiplied by pi power n by 2 that is n is the dimension of the measurements or targets t and sigma determinant of sigma power 1 by 2 to exponential of minus t minus phi w transpose sigma inverse t minus phi w d w. Now by using the result from the equations 1, 2, 3 that is by completing the square in terms of w here we have 1 by pi power m by 2 multiplied by exponential of minus w minus m n transpose s n inverse w minus m n multiplied by 1 by s n determinant of s n power 1 by 2 do determinant of s n power 1 by 2 that is basically multiplying and dividing with the square root of this determinant and then we have 1 by pi power n by 2 multiplied by 1 by determinant of sigma power 1 by 2 into exponential of all the remaining terms that is t power that is minus of t transpose sigma inverse t that is this term t transpose sigma inverse t and then the term that completes the square that is minus of m n transpose s n inverse m n and the term from the prior that is plus m naught s not m naught transpose s naught inverse m naught and dw all the terms from here that is the 1 by pi power n by 2 and the inverse of the square root of the determinant and the exponential function here is these all terms are independent of w so and we are left with a normal distribution of w with the mean equal to mn and covariance equal to sn so the integral can be rewritten as integral normal distribution of w with mean mn and covariance matrix Sn dW multiplied by 1 by pi power n by 2 into square root of determinant of Sn divided by square root of determinant of S0 into, into 1 by square root of determinant of the covariance matrix sigma and then we also have exponential of minus T transpose sigma inverse t plus m naught s naught m naught transpose s naught inverse in s naught inverse m naught and also minus m n transpose s n inverse m n and this is equal to 1 therefore the evidence function so this integral is equal to 1 so the evidence function should be proportional to this exponential that is exponential of minus t transpose sigma inverse t plus m naught 
transpose S naught inverse M naught minus and Mn is given by Mn is given by this relation that is the covariance matrix multiplied by S naught inverse M naught plus phi transpose sigma inverse T and the covariance matrix inverse is given by this relation S naught inverse plus phi transpose sigma inverse phi. So by using these two relations we can we can write this product as T transpose sigma inverse phi plus m m naught transpose s naught inverse multiplied by s n transpose into s n inverse into s n multiplied by s naught inverse m naught plus phi transpose sigma inverse t. So this is the exponential function that determines the structure of p of t. Now and since both p of w and p of t given w that is the prior and the likelihood are, are normal distributions then p of t should also be a normal distribution with mean equal to mu t and covariance equal to sigma t. That means the exponent should be equal to t minus mu t transpose sigma t inverse t minus mu t. So now by comparing this exponent structure exponent structure with this result we can see that from the quadratic term the covariance matrix sigma t inverse is equal to the sum of sigma inverse plus this term that is minus sigma inverse phi multiplied by s n that is the covariance matrix of posterior w given t that is the posterior density of w given t and then this is equal to an identity so we can ignore that and then we have phi transpose sigma inverse and since sn is equal to s naught inverse plus since sn inverse is equal to s naught inverse plus phi transpose sigma inverse phi so by using this relation this should be equal to sigma inverse minus sigma inverse phi into s naught inverse plus phi transpose sigma inverse phi whole inverse into phi transpose sigma from the Woodbury's identity we know that a plus b into d into c whole inverse is equal to a inverse minus a inverse b multiplied by d inverse plus c into a into excuse me a inverse into b into b whole inverse c into a inverse. So by comparing with this identity we can clearly see that a is equal to sigma b is equal to phi d equal to s naught and c is equal to phi transpose. Therefore sigma t whole inverse is equal to sigma plus phi s naught phi transpose whole inverse therefore the covariance matrix of the evidence the, therefore the covariance matrix of the evidence is given by sigma t is equal to sigma plus phi into s naught into phi transpose this is equation 4 now by comparing the linear terms here it is equal to sigma t inverse into mu t now by comparing the linear terms we have sigma t inverse into mu t is equal to sigma inverse phi multiplied by s n multiplied by s naught inverse into m naught. Therefore, the linear term on the other side is equal to sigma inverse multiplied by phi multiplied by the covariance matrix s n of the posterior w given t multiplied by s naught inverse into m naught. That is the product of this term with the covariance matrix of the posterior of w given t and this s naught inverse m naught. Therefore, the mean of the evidence distribution, the mean of the evidence function is equal to mu t is equal to sigma t multiplied by sigma inverse phi s n into s naught inverse m naught. Now by using the result for sigma t, we have sigma plus phi into s naught phi transpose. 
and then we have sigma inverse phi into and by using the result for Sn we have S naught inverse plus phi transpose sigma inverse phi whole inverse multiplied by S naught inverse into M naught. Now by multiplying sigma inverse to these two terms we have I plus phi into S naught into phi transpose sigma inverse multiplied by phi into by now by taking this S naught inverse inside this larger inverse we can write that it is equal to I plus S naught multiplied by phi transpose sigma inverse phi into M naught. Now by taking this phi inside this sum we can see that it is equal to phi plus phi into S naught phi transpose sigma inverse into phi into I plus S naught into phi transpose, excuse me, there is an inverse here, phi transpose sigma inverse phi whole inverse M naught. And now by taking the first phi outside, we have phi times I plus S naught into phi transpose sigma inverse phi multiplied by its inverse, essentially its inverse, which is S naught phi transpose sigma inverse phi whole inverse into M naught. And this product is simply equal to the identity matrix. Therefore, the mean mu t is equal to phi into M naught. That is equation phi. Therefore, the evidence function or the evidence PDF P of t follows a normal distribution with the mean equal to mu t and covariance matrix equal to sigma t. Where mu t is given by phi times M naught that is the prior mean and sigma t is given by equation 4 which is basically a sum of the covariance matrix, the conditional covariance matrix that is from the likelihood function and then the product of phi s naught and phi trans. Thus we can use the trick of completing the square to determine both the posterior density function and the likelihood density. Thanks for watching.